With Thanos now dust and the wider world mourning its most beloved superheroes, it is worth looking back to where our journey with these characters started. In 2008, Iron Man was the new kid on the block, up against DC's Dark Knight, Batman, which led worldwide box office that year. Iron Man would come a respectable eighth above Wally. Fast forward 11 years and both Iron Man and then Captain America have largely supplanted Batman and Superman as our go-to super icons. What was it about Iron Man that grabbed our attention and held it for over a decade? This video breakdown will look at the story's core structure and character components to learn how it was put together. The goal is to expand our understanding of story so we can weave the learned knowledge into our projects. Opening Scenes the opening scene is a straight cut and paste from the story's first turning point at 14 minutes. It depicts Stark as charismatic and likeable. Without it, the setup following the opening scene, 4 through 15 minutes, paints such a vivid picture of the self involved, morally blinkered narcissist, there is a real chance the audience will not invest or care for Stark when he is blown up at 15 minutes. In three minutes, the opening scene creates an emotional response to the jeopardy of Stark and the soldiers. In turn, we empathise with Stark and invest in his subsequent journey. World After the opening scene hooks us into Stark, the setup establishes the world and time frame. The familiar settings, the magazines and cultural icons define Stark's world as a version of our world and time frame. Leaving Vegas, the world arena expands to Stark's home and the personal jet. We get a real sense through a series of scenes. Stark has a vision and mastery over technology. Stark's normal world comes full circle as the weapon salesman with the best toys, with his name printed on the toys. Stakes The setup does not add a ticking clock threat to Stark's normal world beyond his own self-obsession. The convoy attack, as the opening scene, resolves the lack of normal world stakes by overlapping the future threat through the setup. The raised stakes increase our investment in the story. The lie. The lie is usually where the hero aligns through to the end of Act 2, certainly when the hero goes through a positive change as Stark does. The lie in Iron Man is the weapons industry. Stark's allegiance to the lie during the setup is stated through his imperfect world mantra to the Vanity Fair reporter. Peace means having a bigger stick than the other guy is Stark's ethos. Stark learns the folly of weapons manufacturing in Afghanistan and spends the rest of the story destroying them. He never gives up on his bigger stick mantra though. He builds himself the bigger stick. Characters Stark The story setup has been about shaping our perception of Stark. We have seen the charm, the house, the technology, the playboy, the narcissist. The story strapline is the evolution of Stark as Iron Man, which is Stark's external arc, his character desire. Despite the dazzle of Iron Man, if Stark is still self-obsessed come the end, we will not be emotionally invested. Stark will need to change as a person to add that extra dimension. This is Stark's internal journey. The starting point is Stark's flaw. He is living a life overshadowed by his father's achievements. He is miserable and it's feeding the self-obsessed narcissist. Rhodey voices the flaw at 12 minutes. I know you don't respect me because you don't respect yourself. Pepper briefly highlights Stark's potential for personal change at 11 minutes as they back and forth about paintings and birthdays. Stain Stain is the story antagonist and representative of the weapons industry lie through the story. Like everyone in Stark's life, Stain is taken for granted. Unlike most others, he was a mentor and is a trusted ally. Stark and Stain are opposites, the bureaucrat and the genius inventor. As allies and foes, Stain and Stark want the same thing, the biggest stick. Stark designs them and sells them. Stain runs the company for profit. After Stark closes down the weapons division at 44 minutes, they both keep after the big stick, but now from different perspectives. Stain still wants to profit. Stark wants to use Iron Man, his greatest weapon, for good. Stain's flat character arc is demonstrated through his singular investment in the lie and trying to bend the story world to his will, for profit, regardless of the human cost. Pepper It is Pepper through the movie who becomes Stark's guide in human values. Pepper is the Disney princess tasked with bringing good from a flawed male. She is Moana to Stark's Maui, Belle to Stark's Beast, Rapunzel to his Flynn. 
Pepper is vital to Stark's journey, not just in the inner chain she coaxes from him. Stark is largely devoid of emotion. It is through Pepper we connect emotionally to Stark. We care for Stark because she does. Change Once the normal world has been defined and the characters introduced, we need something to change for the story to get underway. Every change has a cause and then an effect. The cause in Iron Man is the hit staying orders on Stark before the story even started. The change is the convoy attack and is the story's first turning point. The effect is Stark's near-fatal injury and capture by the Ten Rings at 15 minutes. The change, the turning point, has propelled Stark into his journey, but he is a long way from realising what it is or even accepting it. Inciting Incident After the change, the rest of Act 1 is about building to the major crisis at the end of Act 1, otherwise known as the inciting incident, the moment the hero embraces the journey. Building to the inciting incident begins immediately after the change. Stark is now dealing with life connected to a battery, a short life if he does not start building weapons for the Ten Rings. There would not be any drama if he did not resist the change, but he finally concedes at 21 minutes and his external desire is introduced. The arc reactor is symbolic of this desire throughout the story, symbolising the invention of the first Iron Man suit to escape, then an engineered suit that can fly at the midpoint, and then powering his suit as he works out its purpose to the end of Act 2. Through to the end of the first act, Stark's interactions with Yinsen drive the external desire, and give us further promise he can resolve his internal flaws. Don't waste it, Yinsen says with his last breath at 36 minutes, by which he means the second chance he has given Stark. At this point, Stark could turn away from the inciting incident and go back into the cave, build weapons for the Ten Rings. Instead, he embraces the opportunity and the journey it will take him on. He steps out of the cave and into the second act. Act 2a. Break to 2. The break to Act 2 represents the climax of Act 1. The climactic moment is Stark's vertical escape. The resolution is Stark's rescue at 40 minutes. Fun and games. Now we're properly into Act 2, the first half to the midpoint, 2A, will be about Stark pursuing the second chance. The turning point in 2A comes at 42 minutes, when Stark shuts down the weapons division of Stark Industries. In John York's vernacular, this is the moment Stark truly steps into the woods. He is not reacting to circumstance anymore, for now he's running the story. The conversation between Stane and Stark at 44 minutes reminds us the arc reactor is the physical representation of both their desires. Stark's to find purpose beyond the weapon shadow of his father and Stane's to nurture profit. Stark's internal need and external desire come together at 47 minutes when Pepper helps install the next generation reactor to Stark's chest. The scene is never really about the reactor beyond telling us there's a new, more powerful one. Instead, it's all about Pepper nurturing the internal change from Stark. It's a wonderful scene stating for the first time Stark's dependency on Pepper. The fun and games close with a great montage. The climactic moment of the sequence is Stark's first tentative but successful flight in his workshop. The resolution of that scene is the midpoint. Midpoint. If 2A has been driven by Stark's external desire, manifested as a move from weapons to evolving his Iron Man technology, the midpoint starting at 59 minutes is about Stark's mastery of the technology. It also marks the first time the suit and Stark merge as one, an increasingly blurred delineation shown through a decade of movies to his last breath in Endgame. The midpoint closes with a reminder of Stark's tentative internal journey at 62 minutes, when Pepper's gift of the first reactor mounted in a frame touches the new Stark emotionally. Act 2b. Bad Guys There hasn't been a threat to Stark outside of his proclivity towards experiment since he escaped Afghanistan. We are shown the Ten Rings piecing together the first Iron Man suit at 61 minutes, but we have no expectation they could put it together, and even then the first suit was far from what Stark now has. No threat. Because Downey's performance in Stark's journey is compelling, we go with the lack of threat and revel at the moment to moment, even after multiple viewings. 
a combination of Stark's success with the suit and fledgling internal change draws him to the charity ball at 66 minutes. If he were the fully subscribed narcissist of the first act, Pepper would easily deflect his advances. Now he has some emotional perspective, she is caught off guard. The key moment for the audience is Pepper moving in for the kiss. Once more, because she buys into Stark, we do as well. This balcony scene is her Disney princess moment, complete with dress and hair. It's always a rocky road for the princess, especially at the top of 2B. Stark is easily distracted by the Vanity Fair reporter, who moves us into the 2B turning point at 70 minutes, otherwise known as the All is Lost. Stane reveals himself to be the primary antagonist, but only as a bureaucrat to this point, locking Stark out of the company so it can continue shipping weapons. Thus begins Stark's real conflict with the story lie, as he regresses and weaponizes the Iron Man suit. All is lost. Stark's arrival to save the villagers at 74 minutes rates among the all-time superhero entrances. The peril of the village family is the emotional payout for the audience, the threat to life of the All is Lost. This victory over the weapons lie is false, largely because Stark has had to create a different version of the lie to defeat it. As a result, the suit is now a threat. People will try to reproduce it, steal it, sell it, as Stain will do. The whole sequence from the All is Lost at 70 minutes through evading the US fighter jets is largely about Stark coming to terms with the potential of the suit. Truth Defined Act 2 closes with Stark confronting his motives for weaponizing Iron Man in a powerful scene at 85 minutes. In this sequence, it is Pepper who forces Stark to state the story truth. Their initial argument shows Stark's narcissist is back in control, but it's the humanity and feeling with which he states the truth that wins Pepper over. His external desire, his purpose realized through the suit, an internal change, emotional purpose as a human value, have come together. Now they will be tested. Act 3. Break to 3. The break to 3 brings Pepper directly into opposition with Stain. It creates threat and raises the stakes, but it's only about reminding us Stain is the bad guy, that he ordered the hit on Stark at the top of the story, and is developing his version of the suit. Where would our heroes, or our journeys, be without growth, forced through opposition? Stain's hit on Stark is responsible for Stark's change, both internally and externally. Crisis The Ark Reactor is the symbol of Stark's second chance, his external desire, and his freedom from Stain's version of the weapon's lie. Importantly, it's also keeping him alive. At 92 minutes, Stain demonstrates he's in control of the story and Stark when he removes the art reactor from Stark's chest. Stain is robbing Stark of his life and symbolically his newfound purpose powered by the reactor. Exploiting the truth. Robbed of the symbolic and physical representation of his power, Stark's truth is restated when the first reactor, thoughtfully mounted as a souvenir by Pepper, is re-employed to save Stark's life and power the suit. Stark will now fight for his truth and Pepper against all the odds. Climax The movie Climax somewhat improbably sets Stane and Stark toe-to-toe -to -toe at 100 minutes. We are told Stane has gone insane, but we have never been shown or given any foreshadowing for this, nor has Stane ever shown a skill set beyond bureaucrat. We wonder about all this as they fight. It takes an edge off our investment. We see further indication of Stark's human perspective as he saves a family of innocents. Stark's reactor countdown and failing suit serve as a great stakes raiser as we head into the climactic moment. Climactic moment. It is Stane who delivers on the narrative of Stark's external desire when he states, Trying to rid the world of weapons, you gave it its best one ever. At 107 minutes the climactic moment also delivers on Stark's internal need when he sacrifices himself to defeat Stain and save Pepper. It is the affirmation of Stark's character arc from narcissist playboy to superhero. The story main is over. Resolution The resolution punctuates both Stark's internal and external journeys. The hero typically sheds his external desire to embrace his internal need. Stark, of course, gets to keep all the toys. The internal need to find at 12 minutes with Rhodey's I know you don't care about me because you don't care about yourself statement resolves with Stark's admission he cares for Pepper as they prepare for the press conference. 
Stark's external desire has been to take advantage of his second chance, courtesy of Yinsen, and his resolve with Stark embracing the mantle of Iron Man. It also offers the way forward, the new beginning for a new story cycle, putting it together. Breaking down Iron Man has been tough. On many occasions it felt like two stories melded to one, two separate external and internal character arcs. Stark wants to escape Afghanistan, he wants to shut down weapons production, he wants to develop the Iron Man suit to destroy weapons, he needs to evolve as a human. It's only when he tells Pepper at 85 minutes he has finally found his purpose through his second chance, courtesy of Yinsen, you get a sense he has been trapped by the expectation placed upon him by his father's legacy. Even then, realising the story is driven by Stark's external desire to find purpose, it is actually his internal development as a human that sits at the heart of audience engagement. We are charmed and enthralled by Stark's charisma and the spectacle of Iron Man, but it's his flaws and the prospect of change that pulls us emotionally. Unlike most characters, Stark walks the flawed line through all his story arcs, barely able to keep the narcissist in check. Thor, for instance, overcomes his brashness in the first movie. The next two are about bending the world to his will, righting a wrong in the world and not one within. Our engagement with the flawed Stark in Iron Man is given a human dimension through his relationship with Pepper. We care for Stark emotionally because she does. Pepper really is the Disney princess, nurturing good from the flawed male. Marvel writers through the last decade have repeatedly used Stark's narcissistic flaws and Pepper's redemptive qualities to invoke audience emotional buy-in. The same quality that held our attention in Iron Man is used in the resolution of Endgame. We understand the flawed human Stark is. We feel the loss so powerfully because we feel it through Pepper's love and acceptance for who he is, which stays with us long after the dazzle of the fight and the credits have rolled. Thank you for watching this video. I loved making it. I create these breakdowns to build my knowledge of story as a writer. I hope you were entertained and I hope you learned something too. Please click like if you did. A new breakdown is released at the beginning of each month. Subscribe and click if you'd like to be notified when they're posted. If you'd like to discuss this breakdown, I look forward to hearing from you below. If you have a book or movie you'd like considered for a breakdown, let me know below too. There are plenty more videos upcoming, starting with The Godfather. Have fun!